call this meeting to order at 6.05. Um, and we have no public today. Is that the case? That yeah. appears to be the case. That's why Sarah is hungry. Yeah. 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 Nope. I definitely use the agenda, not the uh, calendar. It may um, be busy around the holidays. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, approval of the minutes. Did everybody get a chance to read them? Okay. Okay. If I have a motion. I have a motion to accept the minutes. That's Beth. Beth, do we have a second? I'll second Beth. I'll second. Okay. I'm going to go with Scott. Okay. Okay. Is there any discussion with the minutes? There was... I actually had something, and now I don't have it up. I'll um, start. I'll start because I had something really, really okay. minor, really okay. minor, probably nitpicking. The um, at the top where it says somebody was a little late. I don't know. That's just a an L, uh, a degree of information that maybe doesn't need to be there. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I I mean, it, for I'm talking about like for. Because we're all in, we're in an evolution of minute protocol now. I guess you'd say. Yeah. So, as long as we're here, we're here. It's okay with me. Yeah. yeah I agree with that. How would you like me to? The reason why I put that there is because the initial vote was a four to zero, oh, and then the others will be five to zero. So, do you want me to put their individual names, or how would I? I don't know if you care about discerning who was missing for that initial vote. Um, you could just say. You could leave it as Colleen was absent, but then as long as she's in attendance up above. Gotcha. Yeah, Colleen was absent for this vote. Maybe that's okay. The yeah, I'll put it down. Let me vote on. The gotcha. Minutes. Okay. Awesome. I'm okay. Yep. Thank you. Hi, um, sorry. And I guess I um. In the anti-racism task force update, um, and it, it, the last note is it was noted that there's some level of white supremacy in our boards. Um, I felt like that statement was strong, but I don't have another one. And I think, I don't, I, that would have come from either me or Colleen or Christine, because we were the only ones that were, that are on the task force. Um, does any, do you guys have a suggestion on how to edit that? Well, I think board culture is ultimately is a is is a, is a white supremacist kind of culture in some ways. Yeah. Um, so it's more of a, a culture issue in that in that way, versus yeah. the board is not white supremacist, but the inherent culture or the inherent structure of boards tend to be. Yes. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes. Thank you, Beth. And I do remember you were the one that made that. Maybe that's why. Oh, man. <laughs> yes. Um, so I spend a lot of time on them. <laughs> uh, Wendy, can you, do you mind changing it to, it was noted that there's some level of white supremacy in the culture of our boards? Or how about based on the inherent structure of our boards, there's some level of white supremacy. How's Bingo. that? Perfect. Did it. Done. Even better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, nice hey. job. <laughs> okay. Awesome. That was that was all I saw. Scott, you have something else? Yeah, not something else. I'm just trying to understand that because I, I I'm interested in what Beth is saying. So, are you saying Beth that it's been your experience or you or your belief that public I don't know what you'd call public boards in general tend to be that way or our board? The structure of having a board and the people that are usually on boards and the people that are usually holding the power and things like that are usually white and usually upper upper class. And so the way boards function and the way the rules, Robert's rules and these kinds of things are not always inviting for BIPOC communities. Absolutely. And that, that's a good that you brought up Robert's rules because who who came up with Robert's rules? <laughs> My guess say white man. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's a good discussion. I just and I'm just um, sticking on this point because we were adjusting the minutes and we still left the word hour in there. And is it fair to, to? Well, I guess you could leave it in there because our board is a public board. So either either way. Yeah. 
Would you prefer the word just be school boards? Public board? I'm okay with, I mean, not, yeah, okay. I'm okay with our board. I, I don't know. Okay. Sarah, yeah. do you, you have half our hand raised. <laughs> yeah, it just occurred to me, I didn't think of it until this, this moment, but it just occurred to me that is there a difference between capitalizing white supremacy and not capitalizing white supremacy? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, when I see white supremacy capitalized, I think of it in terms of organized white supremacist movements um, and organizations. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I mean, I, I want to acknowledge any, um, <laughs> any level of it that we have here in our board. I want to be absolutely open and transparent. But I wonder if lowercase white supremacy might be more in line with what Beth is talking about. But I don't want to put words in your in your mouth, Beth, either. No, you're right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And supremacy is a strong word. I mean, it really is. I mean, you, I don't know whether you, you, you want to consider white privilege or, or would you or do you want to stay with white supremacy? That's a I don't have a problem with it, but that's yeah. I, it I is. Know. I mean, it's an uncomfortable word and I'm, I'm OK with that uncomfort. Um, but, um, yeah, Wendy, I just I'm fine with it. I, I see what you're saying, David, but I, I guess I'm okay with it. Yeah, no, if, we're, if you're okay with it, that's fine. Um, and, and, the, and the word hour, I'm okay with that too. Um, Wendy, I did want to say that I, I love these minutes. <laughs> and, and so far, I have loved your minutes. They are just mm -hmm. concise and capture exactly what's happening without um, too much extra. And so, well, we nitpicked one sentence. <laughs> oh, wow. These I don't think it personally. This is your board, so I want it to be reflect what you want it to reflect. So yeah. I'm not, it's not personal. I don't take it that way. <laughs> okay, good. Mm -hmm. Well, I did want to say um, to you directly, though, that I, th these are just fantastic. They're so easy to read. They help you remember the meeting and they convey exactly what happened. So, perfect. Okay, uh, is there any further discussion? No, so we'll move to a vote. All those in favor of approving the October 19th, 2020 minutes, please signify by saying aye or waving aye. your hand. Aye. Okay. That was five to, well, any abstains? There's nobody left. So that would be five to oh. <clears throat> okay. Um, I saw some. Uh, David, you're presenting. I just okay. want everybody to see the agenda. Okay. Um, so, Ed, are you on the call digitally and on the phone, or is there somebody else on the phone? Me, hey, it's Ed. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Just trying to understand if we have public here or not, and I know that you frequently call in, so. Um, okay. Uh, so Ed, you're here. Should we um, rearrange the? Let's let's look at rearranging the agenda. Um, we'll put. Is everybody okay if we put Ed first? Sure. 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 Okay. Um, that would be the budget first. Um, Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I just check in my mic. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, go sure. for it. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, uh, so we'll do the budget first, and then we'll go through everything else in order, except I'm going to move the strategic plan to last. Um, so. um, OK. Uh, and then there is a tentative, a tentative executive session was warned, um, and we're going to have an executive session um, as it relates to budget planning for next year. Wow. So that will happen. OK. Uh, Ed, you're up. It's um, I'm going to present, actually. Oh, and then yeah, Ed, Christine. I, yeah. <laughs> OK. Yeah. So I, I've, I've been working with Christine for the yeah. last two weeks, and uh, she just asked me to be here kind of in case some question came up. So with that, I'll turn it over to Christine. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Christine. Yeah, um, so, you're, yeah. so you're the one that asked for the executive session. You're good with some presentation and then 
Well, yeah, I'm going to present. Um, and I'm, I think I'm going to stop. David, you got to stop yeah. presenting. I'm going to yeah. stop presenting. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Just <laughs> Yeah. All right. I'm just trying to get to where I got to get. All right. Take your time. And we can stop presenting. How about that? Good. And I'll present. And I'll just start by saying Ed's been a wonderful um, partner in budget planning. He's been slowly training me in e-finance, which I appreciate, um, knowing how to find answers without having to bug him. I don't know if he appreciates that or not, but <laughs> um, so we've been working together and he's here um, to answer questions that are far beyond my budget knowledge. So let me just present. And can everyone see the Not screen? Yet. Not, yet? Not yet. Does it look like it's scrolling in? Not yet, but it will. OK. <laughs> Just let me know. I'll try again if I need to. I wonder. I don't have to give you permission right now. I don't know. Christine looks frozen. I wonder if that is. Oh, like that. yeah, she does. Okay. You want to back in, Christine? Let me just exit presenting. Hold on. Okay. Let me try again. Am I unfrozen now? Yeah, now you're yeah, unfrozen. Yes. Okay, let me try again. Share. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, you can see it now? Yeah, you got it. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so this is our uh, preliminary proposed budget. Actually, you're on your Actually, home screen. Actually, no, I can't see. <laughs> you can't see the budget? Yeah. What do you say? I'm the only one. I'm, just, I'm, I'm seeing like a blurry version of my screen. <laughs> oh, hold on. Maybe blur is still on. Hold on one second. Yeah. Let me just go back here. Or go yeah, there. You. There it is. There it is. Oh, now it's gone. No, uh, yeah, no blur. I have to turn the blur off. Hold on. If I can. You got to show me how to do that too. I will. Boy, this computer is just okay. There we go. All right, now. Yeah, that's clear. Now we gotta go to your. Now you can see my. You can see my budget presentation. No. Go to that other tab. Okay, hold on. Now you can see it, right? Pretty close, not yet. No. All right. Yes? <laughs> no. No? Sorry. <laughs> that is, what do you see? I see a, like a blurry version of all of our faces. That's, in, oh, hold blurry. on a minute, hold on. Let me like you're see. sharing the wrong screen. I'm sharing the wrong screen. Time. Yep, I am. Hold on. Let me try What's that one more time. You're also frozen again. Oh, now, you, now you're not frozen. That's good. I'm gonna stop. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Hold on. Are you using? You're using a Chromebook, right? Or no? No, I'm not. I left it at school. I'm using a Mac. Sorry. That's all right. And if I'm gonna do send it to me, and I can share it. I've Christine, if you want, I can, I can just call it up because you emailed it to us. There no, I didn't. I didn't email oh. this to you. I do you see it? Yep. Now okay. We got Sorry about that. Yeah. I just hit the wrong button. Okay. So this is a um, proposed FY22 budget, and not knowing what next year is going to be like, it was a difficult task. But I think we've we've got a pretty good plan. Um, just so you know, the way that um, eFinance makes us kind of categorize things uh, reflects elementary, which is K6, secondary is 712, and then location-wide is all-encompassing, uh, like art, music, library. Is um, that a change again from the previous? No, last year we were kind of the guinea pig in, in Ed ran the, we were in e-finance, but we reported out in different ways. So this is, um, this year we're using e-finance exclusively. Okay but it has been a transition. Um, so these are our estimated enrollment numbers for next year. I you know with um, <clears throat> home study, without home study students, we're at 254. With home study, um, I'm not sure all of those will come back or not. Some of them were home study previous um, to COVID, but we'll see, not, not, not many were. 
um, we, we do, we did, we are enrolling two new students at the moment. So I think it's um, a, a number that's going to fluctuate. I can say that there, there are a lot of houses that are selling in Heartland um, rapidly. <laughs> so that's just a point in time right now. That's what we have. And that's what we're going to base our budget on for the moment. Um, these are our high school numbers as, as best we can calculate who's going where. You can see our, our a majority of our kids are headed to Hartford again next year. And our Hanover numbers are, 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 still, um, are still falling. So we're graduating 46 seniors and we're sending 35 eighth graders on to high school. And this, I'll, I'll share this presentation with you. This is a breakdown of where they are by grade level, which school they're at. And this is really helpful for Ed in kind of estimating uh, high school tuition numbers. All right. So for for the budget, I mean, we didn't make a ton of changes this year based on not knowing, you know, where we're going to be next year, what, what school is going to look like, what state funding is going to come in. But we have reduced supplies by a pretty significant amount. Um, that is, you know, one of the places we have some control in the budget. And the staff is aware that we're going to try to just be really frugal again, make sure, you know, make sure we have what we need. But not do any of the extras that we sometimes do. Um, we've reduced one regular ed BI for a total of $17,000 and um, reduced some, oops, sorry, that's my phone ringing, sorry about that. Um, and reduced some, some staff training that we had in the budget for this year and we're not able to um, implement based on COVID, so we're just gonna hold off. And then we are, budgeting for a half-time LPN for next year. And I've met with Annette and she thinks that's um, enough time for an additional uh, nurse, additional nurse support. And that's roughly $12,000. And, you know, if COVID is, has passed, we can reevaluate that later on. Are there any specific items that in supplies that you, you took out that were like bigger ticket items or anything? Um, we adjusted the library schedule, uh, the library um, uh, budget a little bit. Um, one of the one of the line items for the library in the past has been for um, Alexandria, which is the library management system used to check out books. And uh, the librarians met with Angie, and she's going to um, place that in the in her uh, SU budget because she feels like it's an equity issue, all libraries should be able to have the same access to that system, and that wasn't the case. So that's gonna move out of um, the library budget, and that was a $5,000 item, so it's pretty significant. And other than that, we've just kind of reduced each, each um, uh, content area allotment, and then reduced um, general supplies by, a pretty decent amount. I can't. I can't tell you. I can't tell you off the top of my head what it was, but I'm not concerned about it. I think we're going to be fine. Um, so, that being said, um, I'll move on unless there are other questions. Okay, I can't see you, so just holler if you if you have questions. Um, so these are these are the major categories in the budget. Total wages are are up. Um, you know, a decent amount, and that reflects a 2.5 wage increase and that additional halftime LPN. So nothing, nothing major there. Um, benefits are up 10% um, at this point. That's um, the information that Ed has to date, and so he has calculated the increase in um, premium costs in the FY22 budget. Contracted services, so you'll see there's a pretty significant decrease in FY22, and that is attributed to those um, professional development opportunities that we were planning to bring in, Big Picture Learning and Leader in Me. It's also where the BI um, uh, is located in the budget, and there's a building operations reduction of $16,800. Um, you might be wondering why in FY20 it jumped 
so significantly in FY21, and that that's the year we brought on the SRO position. So some of that increase um, is is the SRO position, which is included in the FY22 budget. So the building's operations reduction is. Mm -hmm. Is that a change so, in personnel or is that? No, it's, it, it, and we didn't look this one up exactly. It, it's contracted services. So it could okay. have been something that was brought in, some um, contractor that was brought in to fix something. Um, that would be my guess. Uh, and I don't okay. know. Yeah, it's not, it's not personnel. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, this is the maintenance and repair budget. And it is also, reduced and you know maintenance wages are listed under total total wages so you'll see that reflected from you know previous years um transportation is we've centralized it i think that's the right way to say it david correct me if i'm wrong so right. we've moved we've moved the local transportation into the um, su budget so that we can uh, negotiate a better contract and be able to share um, services if needed. So in our local budget, we have um, local, you know, transportation costs, which which are field trips. I've spelled them out here: athletics, winter activities, and homeless transportation, which we we do sometimes have to reimburse families who are homeless for transporting their children to school if they um, no longer on, are on the bus route due to being homeless. Questions so, on transportation? Christine? Yep. So that, that's, this is a good example. Um, so the FY, oh, there it is. Okay. So FY22 budgeted Heartland budget for transportation goes way down, but it will show up in our supervisor. It will. Yes. As, in as the, a, yeah. Right. It will. Yep. You could back up one slide. Is this, sure. Can we say the same about? The maintenance and repair you can you can yeah. yeah it's helped to have some of that centralized yeah is that that's a huge drop from 20 to 21 and even further to 22 i'm not sure could you explain that again i'm not i don't understand that quite so, so some of the maintenance wages were centralized contracted through the SU and and that is the that is the shift that you're seeing from right. 20 to 21 and then continued um, as in uh, um, forward into FY22. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we did um, so communications insurance uh, postage pretty right. much stays the same. Our, we do have a new phone system and and Larry's best estimate is that the cost um, will increase just a little bit in FY22. Um, this is our high school tuition budget, and you can see that we're sending 11 fewer kids to high school next year, and you would think we would have a very large cost savings. That was my hope, but as you know from last year, we had quite a few move-ins for high school. Um, Heartland's a high school choice town, and that's pretty um, enticing for families when their kids get to that age. So in FY20, our actual was significantly more than we had budgeted. And so we are, uh, as of today, um, Ed has included high schoolers that have moved into Heartland um, this, first, this first trimester or semester. Um, he does have those numbers. And um, so the number reflects how many kids we have in high school. Questions on that? Okay, I don't see. I mean, um, Ed and I were chatting, and and it, it it it's hard to budget not knowing how many kids are going to move in, but that seems to be the um, the pattern as of late. People with high school age kids are moving into Harland. Thought somebody was going to say something. Well, I'll just kind of flag that as a come back to to the board okay. members. Like, do we do we want to think about adding two randomized students to account for some of it and we we gained like six this year though right or was it 10. we i think we get i think we gained nine in fy20 okay. um we gained 
I know of five this fall, but we lost a couple. So sometimes okay. it, it balances out and sometimes it doesn't. But yeah. I, I will say the last two um, conversations I've had were from families that were moving to Heartland for high school choice, buying houses in Heartland for that reason. And so they'll have high schoolers next year that we that we are, we are not in this budget. So it might not be a bad idea to yeah. anticipate that. It's a hard thing, but, and it I think is. we used to do it and then we went back to straight budgeting. And so, uh, do you remember why you went back? David Scott? It was before my time, but I feel like it wasn't too far before my time. And we went back what? what we, from my understanding is that we used to budget we, we, a little me. extra. Go ahead, Ed. So, so, yeah. why, why it, was, it was before David's time. Um, it's been a while, and that's because budgets, uh, because the budgets were going up at such a rate, they didn't have the luxury of adding that. They had to find somewhere to cut, so they took it out of there because... Otherwise, when you had to make hit a number for a tax rate or those kind of things, they were having to take it out of K through eight. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of assuming it would be that sort of thing. I mean, it'd probably be in that place again where we want to back it back out again at some point. I was just gonna. I don't think there's anything wrong with padding in a little extra, but it's probably something we'll take back out at some yeah. point when we're trying to make it look better. Well, and yeah, go ahead, Nikki. Are we, are we carrying a deficit into the 22 budget year? Ed? We, we are, I believe. Ed, yeah. Yes, around, you are. It's $154,000. 154000 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And like uh, Christine, you also said, I mean, not to hop on this, but you know, this is the second big year for Hartford. I know Hartford's always been a big draw for Heartland. I know that it, you know, historically, if you go way, way back, um, it was really hard, you know, it was Hartford and Windsor and almost a, a direct split, but then it started to go Hartford. I mean, I mean, I mean, what do you think's driving that, Christine? Do you think it's um, just family tradition that there are so many people that have that? I, I, I know also the athletic program. Yeah, so, yeah. I think it's I think it's both those things. I mean, Hartford's a, a really good school and it's um, you know, there are staff there that the kids know. That's probably part of it. Good athletics, uh, the tech programs there, uh, parents that have gone there. So their kids are choosing to go there. Um, yeah. Sometimes kids go where their friends go <laughs> or want to go where their friends go. So maybe some of that. I will say that. We have done, uh, you know, we had Linda called around because we really wanted to try to get an accurate count. Um, homeschoolers that might be going to high school, uh, private school, um, well, the Waldorf school, just to try to get an accurate number. And Ed's been working with Lori at the S at the SU office on really um, uh, whoever yeah. what, whoever we have vouchers for. That's what we're that's what we're budgeting for. So yeah. we're trying to get an accurate um, account. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But it is up. One thing Sarah I have her hand up. I, I I was just speaking to somebody in the Woodstock district and they are also struggling with this right now because they've had a lot of move ins and a lot of high schoolers that they hadn't budgeted for and had to switch things around at the high school. So it, it seems like a fairly you know, we're not alone in struggling with this uncertainty during COVID and all of the people moving to, to, Vermont. <laughs> to yeah. Vermont. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think yeah. there may be some legislative remedies too, in terms of, um, in, you know, in terms of the census and there, I've heard some rumblings about maybe making some adjustments because a lot of people are struggling with just, uh, you know, more students than they, than they budgeted for. Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Okay. Um, so here, here's that SU assessment and it's up, but as, as we said before, transportation is now included in that line. Um, and Ed and I were, <laughs> poor Ed, I call him way too much, but I, I like to understand the numbers and what's going on. So the assessment includes the transportation but we get um, a rebate from the state 
for transportation. So when you, when you break it down, um, the SU assessment is made up of early childhood, which is which is up a little bit, about 43,000. Special ed, which is up a little bit, uh, around 59,000. And then transportation minus the rebate from the state um, is included in that. So it, it's a 9% increase, uh, which includes all of those things. How'd I do, Ed? I get that right? Yeah, it sounds good to me. Yeah, it really is the transportation that's driving that. It's driving it, yeah. Okay. Christine? Um, yeah, Scott, I'll go back. Yeah, is that not the um, transportation credit? Or, I'm not sure what you just called it. Um, is that in real time? I, I didn't understand that. Is that something we anticipate? It's something we anticipate, um, I believe, but Ed can correct me. He, he tries to do his best estimate. So the, what that what that sounds like is the um, it sounds a lot like special education reimbursement and how it for some years that was um, special education had been um, was being provided through the SU but the home district was getting the reimbursements and it was a convoluted um, swapping of yeah we we the SU will get the reimbursement okay that's what I'm asking thank yeah. you. So it'll be cleaner that way. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, excess costs. These are services related to um, expenses for students with 504. Um, and we do have some of those. So it's down a little bit, but we still need to budget for those costs. Um, there's total supplies, which we talked about a little bit earlier. And um, it, it is, if you look at FY20, we did spend con uh, considerably less than what we budgeted, but that was based on, um, some of that was because we were remote for part of the year. And this is the total proposed um, FY, that should say 22, I'm sorry, 22 budget um, is eight million eight hundred forty four thousand four hundred sixty dollars which is an increase of two point three four percent a difference of two hundred and two thousand one hundred and fifty four dollars and um a good a good portion of that is high school high school tuition costs yeah high school salary and benefits yep questions thank you christine and ed that uh you guys are way ahead of the ball and i just appreciate that I guess not way ahead of the ball, but on the ball, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> We're trying to be as prepared as we can be. Yeah, no, that's just, it's, it, you guys have clearly done some hard work, and that's a good place for us to start. Well, it helped that Katie got the um, service plan done early, and the SU yeah. budget is set, <laughs> which is great. Yes. Yeah. And Katie, again, another huge appreciation for the, uh, the special ed budget not skyrocketing. <laughs> I tried. Thank you. <laughs> it's very appreciated. You're welcome. Is there anything else for Christine and Ed on the budget? Of course, you know, we, we I know I don't have to remind the veteran, but, um, but it seems like, you know, we, the, the, the push really comes to shove when we start looking at CLA and tax rate and all of that stuff. But it's it's just good to know that this is, that this is the budget and we'll just see what happens. It sound, you know, you'd like to think that they're gonna hold some things harmless just to get us through this crazy time, but we'll, we'll just see. Those numbers usually come in around mid-December, Ed, mid to end of December. They do, David, but I also wanna make it clear that this is the preliminary budget. I mean, I, I, I I anticipate there will be changes to this as we get better numbers for um, yep. all of the things that we're making estimates for. So just, I wouldn't say that this is done by any stretch of the imagination. It will continue to get uh, updates from the state on uh, potential, how they're gonna handle the whole FY22 uh, st uh, statewide ed fund and all of that, but your budget, we put this together with an eye towards adjusting it as time goes on. A good example is if we get the announced tuition numbers for FY22 before, uh, say, December 15th, we will take out the 2.5% uh, increase that I have 
I've anticipated and, and put in the actuals and that could go either way. So please don't think that, that this 202 is going to stay. It, it, it could stay. It could get less. It could get more. We just have to, we just have to keep going with and updating it. And the, and the salary increases are an estimate. You know, right. we haven't even negotiated this year's contract yet. So, you know, whatever so I'm you, going off of, of what the current teacher salaries right, are. Right. And, and, I, and with a, with an, with, with a, Percentage. I guess at what, what, where they would go next year. So I, I will say that that, uh, that's a big thing that might change. I don't know where the negotiations are. I, well, I, they haven't settled and went until they settle, we won't really have a concrete number there. Thank you guys. I still think it's a great start and I yeah, completely it expect it to change. Good work. <laughs> Got yeah, thank you. So one, one thing that Christine uh, uh, highlighted specifically was the phone system or some numbers regarding that. And so one, what I see when I'm signing warrants is that we have uh, um, obligations to VTEL because we're in Heartland, but we also have the new, the so-called new phone system. I think David described that as a, a different first light fiber. Carrier, yep. Yeah. yeah. So. But we still end up paying VTEL quite, VTEL quite a bit. And I don't know if there's any way to. Yeah, uh, to, yeah. To we've on. got to address that. We've had conversations with uh, Larry Dower about that very thing. And we are trying to, uh, what you're paying for is a lot of line charges. And we're trying to get away from those line charges or stop those line charges. But uh, it, it's not as easy as it might sound. Where Larry anticipates that we're going to get it to be a lot less, and I think the numbers that Christine showed you reflect that. They do. So uh, yeah, it it was. I mean, Ed and I looked at it. We actually had Larry on the phone last week um, because what we paid last year, I think, was upwards of twenty thousand. And Larry did say he thought we were going to be able to cut some of those ties with VTEL and reduce that. I think he said by about five thousand, right, Ed? Was that your recollection? Yeah, that is my recollection. So that's reflected. We 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 cut that right out. So hopefully he's right <laughs> or close. Yeah, I, I don't mean to imply that it's easy. I just was trying to share. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. Larry had the same point. You know, we're paying for this. We're not really using this service. So he's working on that. Thank you. Okay. Um, if nobody else has any. Thing. Um, I'm going to try and keep us moving because we have a lot of work tonight. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Christine, you'll send us yep. the budget so we can look through it yep. on our own. Um, and we'll continue this discussion at the next meeting. Yes. Um, so, Ed, thank you for coming. And unless Thanks, Ed. David needs you for something else, uh, you can hang out with us or take yeah. off. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, Christine, you're up again. Up. You want right, to let's, see, let's see. No, let's see if I can present better this time. The window. I might have just done it wrong again. Can you see my uh, presentation? Really, it's fighting you tonight. I know <laughs> you're frozen with your hand up in the air. <laughs> Every time. It's so weird. <laughs> Is it, is that, am I still, can you see my screen? No. Uh, I think I hit the wrong one again. Hold on. But you're unfrozen now. Do you select your entire screen or a window? What, what is? What I go window, but I don't that's know about Mac. That's what I've been doing, but it doesn't seem to be working very well. I'll try again. Share. There it is. You get there it. There it is. Okay. It's there weird. It is. Second try. I did the same thing. Weird. Okay. Yeah. I did share this with you earlier. Um, yeah. And it's it's not too long, but I wanted to update you on some of the you know normal fun things we've been trying to do at school. We we did um, decide to uh, have the kids dress up as they wanted to, and the staff sure took part as well. And we had a ball. Um, it just felt really 
really normal, which um, I think relieved some stress and anxiety among staff and students, and it was a great day. So some creative costumes too, so we were impressed. Um, we had a barbecue last week. Uh, we've been watching the weather, and uh, Craig really wanted to uh, to do an outdoor barbecue. The kitchen staff has missed seeing the kids, so this was a way to, you know, touch base, um, say hi, and and serve a really great meal outside. Again, we followed protocols. Brittany and I were, and Craig and, uh, gosh, Mary. I think we were all serving. Um, kids so they didn't have to touch anything we were we were the we were the servers but it went well the rain held off and it was just a great great um fun fun thing to do with the kids um veterans day <laughs> not the normal um but we did we were able to have uh bright uh bryce morency join us he's a remote student but he's been doing lessons with jamie bernstein and he wanted to play the star spangled banner so we all joined and meet and were treated to um, the Star Spangled Banner, which was which was pretty awesome. He did warn us to turn our volume down before he started playing. <laughs> it sounded great. It was it was pretty awesome. Um, so just a couple of other things that have been going on. P teachers just finished up conferences for the most part. A couple teachers have a few left to go, but we had really really good turnout. Uh, roughly 90% of the families participated and you know again some more expected this week So those went really well. I don't know if remote conferences are just more convenient easier for parents So isn't that really high? I mean, that's a big difference. Is that a big difference? It's it, usually in the fall We have a, a relatively good turnout, but not 90% I mean middle school is where we tend to drop off um, mm -hmm. and uh, most middle school families participated which is great so we're pretty happy um, the character trait for the month um, upcoming is begin with the end in mind and um, Brittany did a recording and um, has been keeping up with all of the um, character trait things that we do with kids and the wild card drawings are happening they're just happening in classrooms so we're trying to again trying to create some as much normalcy as we can but I just thought you might want to know that's the we're working on begin with the end in mind, which is a really important trait, learning how to set goals and work towards them. Um, and great news today, um, our new 7-8 math teacher, Mr. Michael Butts, started. Um, and he, is, he comes to us from Texas. He um, was actually working in Windsor as the permanent sub this you know, beginning of the year. And we um, kind of snagged him. <laughs> and so he comes, comes with experience. He's been in the military. He's taught middle school math. Today was his first day, and it went really well. Um, we're, we're thrilled to have a math teacher with math um, background. So I'll keep you posted. But I think we really lucked out. Yeah, you're going to love him. Yeah, he's great. That's, that's really fantastic news. And I think that. I don't know how we lucked out at that level. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we did, I will say the staff, the, the seven, eight staff really worked hard um, to create a plan that, that worked for the interim. Um, but I think they're all thrilled as well to have a, a math teacher. So, um, so we've been working really hard and most of you I'm sure experienced the first kind of practice remote day, although we've had two other ones. Those were a little different because we had professional development um, during those days for the staff as well. So they were, they were not really full remote days. Um, but Friday was a, kind of a test run. Teachers got guidance uh, late in the game on what the days needed to include, how much time, you know, uh, each content area, um, you know, they, they need to instruct in. Um, they did a really great job pulling together schedules and setting up meets. And uh, there's a lot of moving parts, so it's it's complicated. Um, but they will have the 23rd and 24th to really prepare for the next for the for the week after Thanksgiving and and beyond if if that happens. Um, so, but for the most part, it went pretty well. We heard some good things from from families, and that's our goal to make it um, pretty seamless, easy on parents, you know, but with direct instruction going on from the teachers. And then for our remote afternoons, I think all of our schools we've been working 
diligently to really um, make sure our support staff are being used um, to support children that need that support. And so we're close. Um, we've been working as a team, Katie, Brittany, and myself, the teachers, um, and looking at data to help us make the decisions on which students really could benefit from more ind individual support from staff members. So we're making progress, but it's taken a while. Um, I'll just give you some COVID updates. I included it here. David might want to add some later on. But just so you know, as, as I'm sure you all heard the governor on, on Friday um, with the update, updated kind of regulations, I'll call them. Um, so we had just surveyed the staff on their holiday plans uh, at the end of last week just to kind of get a sense of what people were planning and what we needed to do in terms of quarantine or testing. Um, we had set, we had actually set up testing at Mount Escotney for staff for the Saturday um, after, like the Saturday of the Thanksgiving week. So, um, I'm, I'm sorry, the Saturday following Thanksgiving week so people could be with their families and then test and come back on Monday. Mount Escotney was really working, working with us to set that up. Um, but we have since canceled that because um, of the governor's uh, regulations for holiday get together. So we're going to survey the staff again because we just need to know. Um, obviously, we're encouraging them to follow the guidelines, but if people have already made plans and have family coming in from different places, um, we, we need to make sure the school is safe, the kids and the rest of the staff are safe. So we're putting that together now. Um, so the state has set up surveillance testing, which we are taking part in on Thursday. I think David and Angie are the deliverers of the COVID tests, and we had information on how to sign up um, today, and it'll be a self-test. That's my understanding that um, staff will do, and then and then it gets all labeled and sent in, and the results are back within. Uh, I think they said three to five days. It's not it's not that quick of a turnaround, but um, it'll give the state some information on you know, asymptomatic um, people, and it's just a wide, um, you know, range all over the state. So they're looking for that information. And then I believe they're going to continue continue testing um, staff that, that want to, and this is voluntary, uh, every month, I believe. Um, but David can, can chime in if I'm wrong on that. Um, our, our maintenance staff members, I just wanted to shout out because our uh, – Many of our, our um, carports flipped over in the last windstorm. They came right out of the ground. And, and John and, and the crew have really um, spent time. They got sandbags. They're back up. And um, we, know, we know staff want to be outside with their kids, so we want to support that as best we can. So those are back up. And just a big shout out to our families because they are just super flexible, understanding. They're emailing with questions about the new guidelines. They want to do the right thing. Um, so we really appreciate that. And I think that is my last slide. So I will stop sharing. And if there are any questions. Thank you, Christine. That was good. Yeah, absolutely. I like the happy pictures. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Normal pictures. <laughs> Normal pictures. It. I will say it, it, it does. I mean, we've done the whole SU, an incredible job, I think, of opening schools, staying open, following the guidelines. It's almost Thanksgiving. We're still in school, which is um, a huge deal. And we're we're so thankful and thrilled and we want to stay in school. Um, but people are, are seeing the numbers and there's some anxiety. So um, it is nice to, to do normal as much as we can. <laughs> so, so, I heard a rumor about um, contact tracing. Mm -hmm. The nurses would be. They will not be. No, there was an addendum sent out today by Dan French. It's really the nurses will be asked to communicate. Uh, mm -hmm. Like if a whole pod needs to close, I think the VDH is busy contact tracing. There are a lot of cases. So whatever we can do to take uh, some of that off their plate. Um, so it's communicating back to the. It's communicating. Yeah. It's not doing the actual <laughs> tracing. Great. They take care of that. Yeah, I was concerned yeah. about it. I thought. Yeah, so was, was I. Worried about. <laughs> yeah. The implications of it. 
yeah, I was happy to see the guidance come out um, later this, this afternoon, actually, with a clarification on that. Great. So, yeah. Yeah, that sounds a little more. I sent it to reasonable. Annette Im immediately. <laughs> to the, I forwarded it. So it totally makes sense that they feel under, you know, they're going to feel more stress. Mm -hmm. And I could I, see, you know. Yeah, I think the governor said Friday they were staffed to handle about 90 cases a day and we're above that. So they are, they're busy. Yeah. So, yeah. So, all right. That's my report. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Christine. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, David, you're up. Yeah, mine will be brief because uh, Christine covered a lot of it. And, um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, and I think probably one of the benchmarks that the state will use in terms of being able to keep institutions like ours open will be the, the ability of the Vermont Department of Health and our hospitals to handle that capacity. I mean, it's not so much about transmission in schools, but it's about tracing any transmission that occurs in schools. So I think that's a good point. Um, you mentioned the surveillance testing. Angie's been, uh, you know, he heading that up. Uh, I, I'm sort of trying to partner a little bit with her, but she's taking on uh, the bulk of it. That'll be on Thursday. And Christine, you're right. They are going to try to do a a modicum of this as we go forward. They're, they're thinking about maybe 25% of the schools every month, so it won't be 100%. But they'll 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 just sort of keep up with it, and they might go back. They might m be more inclined to go back to those who have higher counts in terms of asynchronous uh, testing. Um, David, real quick, I thought I read ahead. today the letter from Angie that came from someone at the state that they were doing a quarter of the state a week so that they would get through everybody in a month. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't. Is that what you heard, Angie? I can't that remember that detail, but if it's in the letter, it's, then it's in yeah. French. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's, that's what I, that's when what you I read as well. That, that would make more sense, 25% a week. Then yeah. they would get 100% of the schools a month. So that it's a it's a, it's a, it's yeoman's work. I'm still not convinced we're going to be able to pull this off. But Angie's at the helm, and I trust we're gonna we're gonna make this work. Um, the uh, nego we mentioned negotiations, and that's been a draw on our budget. But uh, again, Scott, uh, as your representative. And the negotiating team, uh, we have a mediation set up on December 9th uh, to uh, to try to settle this. Mediation is a little less expensive in the uh, online world. There are some advantages to um, you know some of this. We don't have to have the media to fly in from New York and stay in a hotel and have all the expenses and have meals and the whole nine yards. So. Uh, that'll save both the association and the districts uh, some money. And we're hoping we're down to just a few items that they're, they're, they're very tricky items. I mean, quite frankly, uh, a lot of the items are, are related to Heartland. So we're, we're going to just have to see what what happens. And we've talked about those items in the past. And Scott's been a great, uh, you know, advocate for, you know, the board's opinion. And uh, we've got Pietro will be with us. Uh, you know, he's our attorney so he'll be part of that mediation with us so I, I'm I'm confident that will work out okay uh, the SU budget we had that budget committee Colleen Spence as a member of your board is she's part of that committee she showed up uh, at that meeting and and uh, and uh, it was I was there Nikki you know, yeah she was there she did it uh, we like that and uh, and uh, much like the budget you saw locally tonight I mean it is what it is. There's not a lot of wiggle room there. I think, as we said, Katie Ahern did a good job holding SPED cost to 2% or just a bit, just a tiny bit under. The, the largest increase will be that transportation. And if you go That's to the- so miraculous, the Katie Ahern piece. Yeah. yeah, the fact that she got that done and got it done in a timely fashion. And also, this is the first time too, not to, you know, not to be critical of, it, it's a difficult job, but this is the first time in a long time that the service plan, which is absolutely all the services that will be offered next year, matches the bottom line of what we budgeted. So now all Ed's waiting for is based on that service plan, what are the estimated revenues? Because as we said before, Ed will take the expenses, he'll subtract those revenues, and that's essentially how he gets to your assessment. 
Um, but I'm I'm anticipating that uh, you know other than the uh, transportation move, you know we're essentially in that one to two percent range in all of the uh, those categories at, at the SU level. And Larry will be proud to tell everybody on the 23rd when we meet as an SU. Some of you will remember that discussion about centralizing the equipment and Larry promising that the equipment's expenses, he thinks they would go down if we could bulk order things. And sure enough, you know, they've gone down about 30 percent, uh, you know, year over year. So that's a pretty big savings when you get right down to it. So Larry was was um, right uh, uh, about that. Um, I think you just stole his thunder, though. <laughs> I might have. Yeah, I stole his. Yeah. He, <laughs> I don't want to, he'll have so we'll all have to look surprised and pleased. <laughs> he'll have, yeah, yeah, he'll have his fancy PowerPoint. He'll he'll explain that uh, to us. And then the only other thing is we, you know, we're having to make a few calendar adjustments on the fly. Uh, we had we had anticipated a week after Thanksgiving, which I think is going to work to our favor, both in terms of practicing the remote instruction and also giving that extra window of time in case people, for some emergency, have to travel or have to go somewhere and. You know, uh, so so we'll 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 be ready for that. The hospital is, even though we're not going to formally encourage folks to travel and then be tested, the hospital now every every Saturday morning from nine to twelve, they are going to have an open drive-through site, so anybody can can call. I don't know. I I imagine there's a your PCP or your or an eight hundred number that you can call and register for that testing. So if there are a few people who absolutely just absolutely have to travel, then that's fine. But we're saying. No exceptions, no excuses, no entertaining, and no traveling. It's a bummer of a time uh, to be doing that, but that's the, that's the way it is. We do, and Angie uh, has worked hard on the uh, on the uh, next week, um, the 23rd and 24th are staff development days. But uh, I think Christine alluded to that. But that's really to get us ready for uh, well, to get us ready for future in in integrated work because that's you know that's been going pretty well, and also to get us ready for that remote. Uh, instruction. And the other thing I think we have to keep in mind, and this is the last thing I'll say, is that Angie is coordinating about a, 150 you know, kids in the remote world. And she has a staff of, I don't know, what is it, eight people, Angie, eight or nine? Well, 128, 128 students is the yeah. current count. I have five classroom teachers and two special educators and a slew of um, special education paraprofessionals supporting students with IEPs. Yeah, so I think that's just so, it's, that's something we ought, we can forget and we need to note that. Uh, and we are gonna work on ways, uh, Angie's working with the administrators, to start including some of those remote kids in, whether it's lunch bunches or just some social activities or, because the word Angie's getting back from those parents is those kids do miss their classmates and, uh, that that part of it is 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 difficult, but uh, we have to remember we're we're really running four districts this year, including our remote our remote district, and Angie's done a nice job with that. But that's about it for me. I had heard a rumor from some families that they were planning on coming back um, in January. What Nikki, what's the word on that? When we uh, set it up, we said that it would be on a semester basis that you could decide to come in or go out in January. We've uh, managed requests to, up to this point based on the capacity in the buildings. We've had requests for students to come out and to go, in, go to the remote only program and vice versa. We've had to turn some kids down in some of our buildings because there's simply no space given the current distancing restrictions. So where I have surveyed, I started, um, with uh, the remote only families, surveying them. I know right now we had five students from Heartland that wanna come back to in-person and that's with only about 40 responses and I have 40 kids. And um, that doesn't mean, I mean, that's not necessarily 40 kids, it's 40 families. So that might represent 50 kids. Um, so that means that our principals are going to have to be looking at spacing and it definitely is going to impact that. And then the next step would be to send out a survey to the in-person families to find out who would be interested in remote only. Okay. It's going to be Thank a huge, you. it's going to be a huge undertaking. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
especially if we have an influx coming back, um, spacing will likely be an issue. And so we'll have to figure that out. But eighty. And to chime in, so is staffing. We made a lot of staffing decisions for special education based on where our students were. Um, so, and we're running into that now of students wanting to come back who needed support. Those people were reassigned in some cases, like, you know, absolutely completely reassigned to, to different buildings. And so um, it's going to take time. It's not going to be uh, it's not, whereas we're finding out, it's not even within those two weeks we originally thought would be a turnaround. We're, we're looking at longer wait times too. So, so you're aware, full disclosure. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of expected that. And I'd, I'd heard from a couple of families that were in remote that wanted to come back. So I, uh, I had a thought that this might be coming. <laughs> and I appreciate the work that you guys are going to have to do on it. Yeah. So I have a quick question, Angie, is it, so if a family, you know, families want to come back and I don't, I don't have any idea if this is the case, but if, if a classroom that they want to come back to is full capacity, which again, I don't know if that's the case in any of our situation, but um, what happens in, the, in that case? Um, right now, if a, a student is, uh, wants to come back and the classroom is at capacity, they have to remain in remote only. Um, right. We haven't, and we haven't discussed. I don't think we fully thought, thought through, through the impact of it um, for opening it up again in January. Um, mm -hmm. It it'll be a problem to be solved. But in January, my my our thinking, I, I speak collectively, is that we will accommodate every student as best we can. So. Um, I think that, you know, I, we are locked into that six foot distancing because of our risk management. Is that correct, David? Yeah, well, you know, we, we've been locked into that, not so much because of risk management, but because we decided that we were going to err on the side of caution. But right now in phase three, that six feet, at least K to five moves K to six moves, moves to uh, moves to three feet. But again, I think that's that's going to be the nuances that we're going to have to look at. You you've you have not formally uh, reached out to those parents yet to get a an accurate sense of who might want to come back. Is that correct, Angie? That's what I'm in the process. I sent the survey Friday. Okay, perfect. I mean, I think that's what we're going to have to look at, and it will take some work. And Brittany's question is a good question. Um, we'll have to see how we can serve those students. Well, you know, uh, we, and, and again, yeah, I think you're right, Patty. That would be a good topic for the reopening committee. Yeah. Um, I mean, the interesting thing about the remote kids is that they've been in, you know, they've been sort of in these cohorts that are school-based, but those teachers have been teaching across, um, you know, across the SU. So, yeah. So, I mean, we may be able to factor some of that in too, that, if we have enough kids that want to come back, then maybe one of the, one or two of those teachers can go back, and then we find the space and figure out how to get them to where we got to get them. It, it'll be good. Hang on tight. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Figure, we'll figure it out. It may um, mean some some changes in classroom spacing, but right, right. We can figure that oh, out. Just a when do they have to let you know for sure? Did you give them a deadline, Angie? I did not give them a deadline. Um, I am hoping to have uh, more complete data. I mean, by December 1st, and we're gonna start planning based on the data that we have. Um, up until September 10th, we still had families coming in and out of remote. So as much as we try to give a deadline, we can get the bulk, but families don't operate that way, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and, and you have to remember too, our semester change, is around the middle of January. So it's not like we have to snap back to this the day we get back from Christmas break. So, I mean, we've got a couple of weeks on the other side of the day to, to work on this as well. So, the 20, 22nd is the last day, January 22nd is the last day of semester one. Yeah. And we I may have some, some families that. Oh, sorry. What'd you yeah, say? Oh, sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Sarah. 
I was just gonna say, I wonder if cases continue to rise as they yeah. seem to be, if some of those families may rethink it. Um, so I, you know, I would, I would hate for you all to put a ton of time and <laughs> planning into it and then have it all, you know, have it all switch around as cases continue to rise and families change their mind yet again. Um, but I don't know how we, how we plan for that. Well, we may have, we may have some in-person families that choose to go remote as well because of yeah. the numbers. So yeah, we should, we should it could be a wash. We'll see. <laughs> so um, just for uh, uh, official purposes, I'm moving us to the COVID update. We're yeah. out of the superintendent's report now. Um, and along those lines, uh, we talked about um, potentially extending the school day. Is, are we still in discussions about that? Is the case rise causing us to not? Wh where are we? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. And Christine backed me up here and, and Angie. Sure. But uh, the simple answer is yes to both of those things. We're continuing those discussions and the rise has kind of slowed those discussions down a little bit. Um, and again, we have basically said to our staff that we would not do that either until uh, probably when we make all of this semester change, it won't be till January. So we're giving ourselves some time to watch the case count and we're giving ourselves some time to uh, do, do the extra planning. The good news is that the feedback from parents and teachers, the union and association is that people think that because of the difficulty with that, that afternoon wind time remotely, and the inequity of the access to that time that most people would like to see an extension if, if we could do it. So it, it is clearly on the agenda. Did Christine and- Oh, Angie I think, I think you got it. You got it right, David. Thank, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, um, the, I'm, I don't know about the other board members, but I'm getting a lot of questions about it um, and some emails and stuff like that. And I, I, my response has been that I know that you guys are planning it. Yeah, um, yeah, we yeah. may want to give a bit more of an expectation, as much of an expectation as that you can give. Because I think there are some families that are like, why aren't we close to full time now? Like, I want to be full time now. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. and then get, there's the rising case count. So, and I heard today that there might, I, 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 it's a group of Weathersfield, a group of parents in Weathersfield that might be stirring up a petition. <laughs> Uh, for so I think you're right, Nick. I think people are talking about it and wondering why we don't do it. But again, it's very hard to explain, and we're not going to get into it tonight. But there are a lot of complicating factors, and one of the complicating factors is that we want to safely keep these kids in pods, and that means teachers have to be with the same pod, or groups of teachers have to be with the same pod all day, which throws off completely your planning periods and your duty-free lunches and your intensive time. So we've got to get this figured out. My guess is to do it. It's 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 probably never going to be back to a full day, 2.30, but I think we can add time to the day and that'll help instructionally. And hopefully it'll help parents with some of the childcare issues. Yeah, that's what I've been, that's what I've been telling all the parents that ask me is that Contractually, right. we probably can't ever go to a full day because of the pod structure, and that's right. the expectation that they need to have. But that we're working on it. Yeah. Um, so. And I think too. I mean, I've been getting more questions like a week ago, but I'm not. I haven't gotten much of anyone saying anything in the past week. Yeah. Um, because of all the case rises, so I think people are also a, a little understanding at this point around it, and also I think everyone's just getting a little more nervous. Yeah. So Patty put in the um, chat box that she was on a statewide union president's meeting today and the physicians on the meeting are still recommending the pod structure. So yes, I, I think the pod structure is working. And I think, I think that the, the cases that we've had in the supervisory union and um, the contact tracing, the state's response to our cases shows that what we're doing is quite effective. Yeah. Um, and the, and other so, thing, the, the other thing, Nikki, I think we can be proud of is that we've, right from the beginning, we've been five days a week. We, we, we don't do this. Your, your child is in on Monday, then they're out on Tuesday. Everybody's out on Wednesday, then your child's back on Thursday. We just never bought that. So I, I've, I have felt, you know, pretty confident that, that we, we, what we've got is every child that wants to be in school five days a week is there. But, 
I agree. I think I was, I'm impressed that we pulled that off. Um, and I also still want to give a shout out to everybody, especially the nurses. Yeah. The um, nurse, yeah. Big yeah. Time. This, this this is still working even with the case rise and I'm knocking on every piece of wood in my office. <laughs> um, so, um, Did you see Sarah's question in the chat box too before you move on? I did not. Did you, Nikki? Uh, oh, are we adding, um, so Sarah's question is, are we adding a morning meeting question about multifamily gatherings? Or the, I mean, what I mean is to the to the questions you answer when you drop your kids off in the morning. Are we going to ask people have Have you gathered with another family? I mean, it's you know we've been talking about that, Sarah, and I I don't know what to do because there are some families that transport other families' children to school because that's the only way they have to get to school. There are kids that travel home that way. There are kids that have childcare in multiple in somebody else's home, so. I, yeah, what do I do? I mean, that's essential. They need childcare and they are definitely mixing homes for childcare, some families, because they have to. Um, one of, Sarah, one of the things I did think of though, is I think after the Thanksgiving break and after that remote week, we are gonna have to, at least on the first day or two, we're gonna have to ask, did you travel over the holiday? And did, you know, and did, you know we're gonna have to figure that out because that was clearly part right. of the order. Um, but I agree with Christine. I think on a daily basis, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. Even asking, I mean, families are doing the best they can. And, you know, now you're not even supposed to take your child with you to the grocery store. That's not yeah. essential. But what if you're a single mom and that's the only thing you can do? So it, it's complicated. But I, I'm, I'm under the... Um, thinking that we should survey our parents before the break and just, you know, if you're going to do it, you do it. No judgment. No, I mean, yep. it's just, we need to keep our kids safe when they come back and knowing ahead of time would be really important, I think. Yeah. But, yeah. And I think along those same lines, um, knowing ahead of time and also helping those parents do the right thing. Yeah. Um, so, because I, I didn't know about the Mount of need testing. Um, and so, you know, asking parents to be honest and then giving them the tools to do it the right way, even though they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing. <laughs> so, right. Um, but again, right. if you've got a child flying in from out of state and you bought that ticket two months ago, I mean, it just gets, it gets very tricky. Yeah. So. Yeah. Scott? Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I'm questioning the, um, so maybe Britt, Maybe David or Christine can answer this. I mean, what's the deal with the one month, uh, the one week that you're planning on staying remote after the holidays when we everywhere else we hear that two weeks is a good amount of um, quarantining? And so it doesn't sound like your, your plan really goes with the science that from Health Vermont. No, it, it accommodates seven days with a test, a negative That's test. That's what we were thinking. It doesn't accommodate the 14 days. That's right. The test is not, test takes how many days to get an answer? And it, uh, it, it, it depends. I mean, it's taking a little bit longer now, um, but it depends where you go for tests. I mean, it is something that we, we uh, to be honest, we were hoping the governor would make a, a mandate for the whole state, and that hasn't happened yet. But would it be safer to just go two weeks remote after? In my opinion, it would be. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. The, the timing on the tests, I had it in my mind. Uh, I'm thinking of the uh, the rolling employee testing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that surveillance testing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's different. But on the on the other hand, Scott, it's like kid, then kids that need to be in school aren't in school. So it's really a hard, I mean. It's a tough decision. What it will do, though, Scott, is it will, let's say somebody has to travel or the they bought the plane ticket, the kids got to come home. So they've traveled, you know, instead of, you know, 14 days of quarantine, even with this, with that remote week, they'll only have to quarantine for another, you know, that next week, essentially. So it'll, it'll be better. And some, some folks, I heard that Woodstock and she, and that may have changed, but I heard that Woodstock and uh, is just going to go back right after the Monday after Thanksgiving. And I have heard other people that have said they've taken the two weeks. And then you've got two rivers down in the Cavendish area that's 
that's saying they're not going to go back at all between Thanksgiving right. and Christmas. So people are all over the place, and it's just trying to find the right compromise to uh, keep the kids engaged in their learning and everybody safe. It's not. It's not easy. Thank you for the I, answer. I have no doubt that I think that I, I'm kind of glad that we're giving people a week to do the right thing. Um, because yeah. I do think that there's going to be families that have to get together. Um, but I don't, I would disagree with the two week because for all the families that aren't going to get together, um, these kids aren't allowed to have play dates. They're not allowed to, um, so our, you know, the kids, my kids are going to go two weeks without um, any interaction. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a long haul and it's going to be a long winter. And I think school is going to be the one thing that these kids really look forward to. So, and I, and I heard today that they, and this doesn't, this makes sense, right? That then we can anticipate after that two weeks, <laughs> you know, that we would have been out, let's say that there's probably going to be another Thanksgiving spike, right? Because it takes two weeks for all that to incubate around those families that did get together. And I think we're just going to have to keep an eye on it. And that might be when the state says, Hey, look, this is the way what's gonna happen, but they really then we'll be out for Christmas, so it's fine. What's that, Beth? Then we'll be out for Christmas. Yeah, then we'll be out for Christmas, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll be looking at that semester end date of January twenty second. <laughs> yeah, we'll be all like again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think the kudos to the schools because not just ours, but I mean we've done I mean the schools are uh, you know, they're they're masking and they're they're in pods and they're distancing. And that's why the transmission is not happening in schools. It's it's coming into the schools from these other kinds of social gatherings. So I think the schools are a great example of if if the whole society lived like we were living when kids arrive at 8:30, we we'd probably have this thing licked by now. But people are just stubborn. And I I read a stat today that you know 35 percent if you know of the people still think that you know this is a conspiracy and that this mask thing is a joke and you know it's just it's so it's so crazy yep okay is there anything else on covid update i think we're good okay uh we did the budget um okay so uh the anti-racism task force um i'll give a quick update on that and let uh christine and david chime in um so since I uh, last gave an update, um, Ariel and Jameson from Writing Wrongs have um, come back from their exam period and re-engaged um, and scheduled a meeting with the administrative team at the SU level. And that meeting happened last week. Um, and that um, just for some of you went through a meeting um, it's just to, to kind of have an open dialogue about um, where the schools stand on racism um, and what's said in that meeting is kept in that meeting, but it helps Ariel and Jameson kind of frame um, the concerns of our community and um, what where we really need to go. Um, so the administrative team met last week um, and now we have a pool of teachers um, who also very much want to be engaged on um, the task force. So I, the plan, as far as I've seen in the emails, is that Ariel and Jameson are going to do um, another meeting with the teachers. And then uh, my understanding is that as soon as that is done, they're going to draft up um, a draft policy to bring to the anti-racism task force um, and the anti-racism task force will take a look and decide how we expand our community engagement outside of that. Do you guys want to add anything? That was perfect. <laughs> I think you hit it. No. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So I'm checking that off the um, agenda. Uh, portrait of a graduate's on here. Um, I had a feeling like Portrait of a Graduate is now the strategic plan and that we should just say exactly. we talk about it and not put it on the agenda again. Yeah, the board okay. was supposed to vet the strategic plan, essentially. I yes. mean, you know, yeah, j just in anticipation of the SU trying yes. to adopt that next time. Yeah. And I and I've I, I assume everybody's got it. I could pull it up on the screen. Let me know if you want me to. 
Yeah, so um, so I emailed it out right before the meeting uh, to the board members. Um, so if you guys want to take a second and pull it up, um, or we can have David pull it up on the screen. Um, and uh, what? So my thought here, I want to pull it up on my screen. Excuse me, Nikki. Is is this different? Okay, that's exactly it. That's so. That's what Laurie Brown. Um, shared. I just wonder, wonder if that was the same as what you shared. It was in your yeah. packet. It was yeah. in yeah. your packet. Yeah. I you. forwarded, yeah. Oh, right. So and it that. was in the packet. I also forwarded um, some additional documents that Angie pulled together. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, and and uh, the, the recommendation, just so we know, that uh, this is the third, this might be the third and last board to look at this, is to really focus on the goals and then that's the most important part for the boards and then also the objectives are secondary i wouldn't get into all those draft strategies and notes and you know acronyms and that's the weeds i mean i think it's really do those goals reflect the direction that you know uh we think we want to be heading in yeah. so um so my plan right now is to go through the goals and the objectives um, and make sure that we're hitting them. And um, we can ask questions of um, Angie, who was on the writing team. Um, but I was also going to propose a two minute break for people to do jumping jacks, get a glass of water or hit the restroom if you might need to. And uh, then we'll dive into this or start reading it if you haven't had a chance to read it. I see Angie clapping. So <laughs> we'll see you yeah, back yeah. for. Um, well, we'll go with we'll go with four minutes at seven thirty. Um, we'll have everybody back on. So, thank you guys. To dive in, I think all the board members are back, right? I see Colleen, Sarah, Beth, Scott. Good. Okay. Um. So, I guess I'm going to read the goal because I'm the board chair, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading out loud is not my thing. So we're going to see how this goes. Um. So goal number one is student success. Um, WSESU will improve students' learning experiences because the personal, educational, vocational, and civic successes of our students are inc increasingly challenged in our rapidly changing world. So this goal does come directly out of the portrait work. Um, students need to not just know content because content changes so quickly um, and even the skill sets that students need are so wide and varied and those skill sets are even changing quickly so we need students to um be engaged in their own learning and um be able to be flexible um continuous learners by the time they graduate so any questions on the goal okay and i also i'm also going to take a step back um i'm uh, channeling Elizabeth Burroughs right now in that a ton of work went into um, drafting this from a whole committee. And so while as the board, we're responsible for approving it and making sure that we agree with it, um, unless there's something that you really strongly disagree with, we're not going to get into the wordsmithing um, and just, we're going to um, hold faith that that team of people um, did a good job. And um, and I know that they went back and forth and wordsmithed a lot. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. OK, so to achieve student success, draft uh, the objective one is um, WSESU will create a learning framework that guides the implementation of de deeper learning, which is the portrait, um, from pre-K through 12, as evidenced by the framework supported presented to the superintendent by 2021. Um, so that seems kind of obvious to me. <laughs> Any questions? Angie, go for it. Just a word about the time frame. So uh, Mike asked us to have a time frame on there. So it is a rough estimate. And because it, it if it says June 2021, it doesn't mean the work starts in May of 2021. It means we have up through June 2021 to get the work started and completed. So the timeframes could could be adjustable depending on our priorities. 
um, as boards. Thank you, Angie. Uh, Sarah. It, I don't see any language in here about proficiency. And I know there's been such a, you know, the last few years have been so much about proficiency. Is, is there something that's sort of replacing that concept or I, I, I'm just curious about the, um, it, it feel, that feels like a, sh a shift. It's um, the learning framework is mm -hmm. um, what will be, uh, that proficiencies will be feeding into the learning framework. Okay. Okay. But I guess when, there's a lot of ways to look at proficiencies, but from my standpoint, I often think of proficiencies as related to how we test and how we do on um, the SBACs and those kind of proficiencies. Um, and there is a shift away from that um, through the portrait work. Um, people really felt like that, te that teaching to the test was not beneficial um, moving forward which I don't think that we specifically talked to the test ever, but um, that it was okay to move away from that. And it was okay to see um, different scores on the SBACs as long as our students were meeting our expectations of um, being uh, more proficient at different skill sets. That, I don't know if I said that right, but. Um, okay. Are there any other questions about objective one? We have, a, we have 10 pages to get through, so I am gonna kind of fly. Okay, um, objective two is uh, WSESU will create an assessment system supportive of the student's deeper learning by July, 2022, as evidenced by the plan submitted to the superintendent. I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. Um, and I, I do think that uh, one of the keys in here, um, as far as the strategies go, is develop reporting tools and processes that tell the story, um, because the assessment is not going to be, um, you know, specifically, can this ki kid do two plus two? It's it's more of, is this kid able, capable of um, broader learning in math? And so we're moving away from, a, yes, they can do this, and towards a, um, this is the story of how they learned to do this so the kid can see how they moved through their own story, um, teaching the kid how to learn. Um, okay, objective three, WSESU will create an inventory of extended learning opportunities for grades pre-K through 12 by July 2023, as evidenced um, by the inventory being shared with the superintendent. Um, so this, David, you want to scroll down? <laughs> um, that that goal is um, that we don't just want students learning in school. We want students to be learning all the time inside and outside school. Um, so we want to provide additional opportunities. Any comments, feedbacks? <laughs> OK. Um, so goal two is culture. Um, and I, uh, I will take another step back and say that um, when uh, Patel for Kids creates or helps um, entities create a strategic plan, um, almost always the first one is student success because that's why we're here. Um, all of us, and that's why they're doing it. And then the other one is culture, because culture is critical um, both to student success and um, to moving a school system forward. Um, and so those two don't necessarily come out of our portrait planning, but they do match with what our portrait planning was. Um, so goal, to, goal two is culture. Uh, WSESU will strengthen and broaden the connections between and among staff and the core work of education in pursuit of greater staff engagement, well-being, innovation, inclusion, and resolve. Um, so the idea here is that teachers um, that feel supported are more willing to go out and risk um, 
to take more risks um, that might provide broader learning. Um, and they'd be supported in that environment. Um, so WSESU will develop a portrait, will develop a portrait of a WESU member and share that with the superintendent. Um, so these are competencies of what we expect our staff right. to look like. Yeah, and I think, the, I think the idea right. there was if our portrait includes empathy, then we want to we want to define what empathy looks like in a staff member. So it's, I think this is an important one. I agree. I think not, well, not that they all not, but yeah. No, I, I think that this is a really important one. Um, so uh, objective two is WSESU will uh, design a plan to provide professional development about best practice collaboration as evidenced by the plan being shared with the principals by July 22. Um, and I think this is bringing everybody up to speed on the way that we want our students to be educated um, and get, giving those teachers those best best practices. Yeah. And, and, go ahead, Scott. Uh, Scott didn't. <laughs> I was just getting a little feedback, but um, I also think that the, the pandemic and the way we're in these pods and the way people are collaborating and working together, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's not exactly the representation that we're looking for, but I think it's forced us to really move into this job-like staff collaboration faster than we might have under other circumstances. Um, objective three, WSESU will design a plan for annual Big Ideas Summit to explicitly build on the SU's annual calendar of a recurring process of innovation um, by July 2023. Um, I, uh, I'm super excited about this part because this is um, a requirement that our staff teach each other the things that went really well. Um, and I think right now, we don't have as much of that. Um, so this is really exciting. I will say that one of the changes um, that Sean Whalen felt really strongly about was um, the conduct a failure audit. Um, it's, not, it's not really an audit. Um, it's, it's more to look at, the, look at where we've messed up so that we can improve. Um, uh, it's, uh, I forget, I used to have another term for that, but uh, I lost it. Um, <laughs> but it's really diving deep for improvement, um, not necessarily saying you failed there and you failed there. It's more holistic. Um, yeah, and I wonder too, looking at this process is real, really interesting. It seems cute, amazingly educational and how, how could we incorporate student learning within this of like having students observe and be part of this? Because I think them seeing other adults around them risk, succeed, fail is huge. And um, that would be really intriguing. Good I point. agree. <laughs> um, I don't know how you do it. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, you know, in the notes, there's the gift of failure, um, which is a book, and just to be able to bring it to incorporate some of those practices with the students, I think would be well, and having it be a safe enough place too that teachers can share their struggles of how, what they're doing and, and succeeding and failing on and does with students and to be able to share that process with their students. Um, mm -hmm. I think it could be really amazing. I completely agree. Um, okay, so objective four under culture is WSESU will conduct a diversity audit. Again, the word audit um, is not meant to be punitive. Um, to determine if gaps exist between SU practices and policies, um, the uh, portrait and a healthy culture. Um, so again, this is just to, to look at everything to make sure that everything um, matches with how we actually want to be, not with the way that we've always done things. Um, 
And I, I see this objective as um, kind of a out with the old. If it, if it didn't work, get rid of it. Um, if it doesn't match what we're trying to do, get rid of it. Um, and I think that's really important because I think that our, a lot of our staff is holding on to old ideas um, and maybe just needs the freedom to push them away. Um, but again, the word audit, um, I guess I would like to see changed. I'll bring that up at the SU meeting. Um, okay, any questions on culture? Um, I know that a lot of you weren't part of the uh, portrait, um, but you've heard some of what we've talked about happened during the portrait and the goals of the portrait is really to create a more freeing um, school environment for everybody. And so hopefully what you saw in those two goals aims at what you heard. Scott, do you have something or? Yeah, I was just gonna say that some of those dates in, in the objectives under culture, uh, particularly one and or number two had a, uh, says July 22. It's just uh, making me think because I'm thinking negotiations, what has to be accomplished to um, if this is really going to be changing expectations uh, uh, that the district, the employer has of the employee. I may be, I may be wrong about that, but what do you think, David? Uh, I think, I think it does relate a little bit to our need to, you know, expand those professional development days to some degree. I mean, we've, We've had that conversation in negotiations before about, you know, do we have enough time really to do that type of collaboration and planning around best practices? So I, I think it could have an impact, Scott. It won't, it won't come up this time, but I think as we start into the next section, it will. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Um, to for getting rid of the audit, audit ideas, the continuous improvement review. Um, Wendy, put that in the minutes. <laughs> and then we can bring that up. I think I that's think a good idea. I think reviews a good word. <laughs> yeah. Assessment. Yeah. Angie's got yeah. it. <laughs> there we go. Angie's got it. OK, we're good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, OK. Uh, Goal number three is student wellness and engagement. Um, WSESU will further integrate the whole student into their education so that students increasingly see relevance, purpose, and connections between their learning experiences and their individual and collective lives. Um, the idea here is that um, Battelle recognized that um, our students are struggling, um, but that we have some mental health issues in our schools um, and behavioral issues and that um, some of our students are just really struggling with their lives. Um, and so we want to find a way to make sure that our school um, educates the whole student so that we teach kids um, how to find emotional health. Um, so along those lines, uh, draft Objective one is WSESU will create and fund a student mental health and social emotional leader position to guide the SU actions for the SU school and classroom support of mental health by June 22. Um, so the, the leader is just going to coordinate at the SU level. I say just. <laughs> As John says, just is a four letter word. Um, so, so uh, there. <laughs> This person will be a coordination person to make sure that all of the SU schools um, are really making emotional health a focus for all of our students, which I think yeah. is important. Um, I think we've done a good job of that in Heartland, um, but I think that having that go SU wide would be good. Yeah, we um, have, uh, and, and Nikki, just so in these next few objectives, you'll see in a you know a, a position stated like this one. And keep in mind that it doesn't necessarily mean a new full-time hire, but it might be, you know, reassigning somebody's work or re-engaging them in a different kind of work. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a new hire. And I hope it isn't. 
Um, I <laughs> okay. Um, won't be. Yeah. Objective two would be student voice and choice uh, will be operationalized at the SU school and classroom levels as evidenced by a report to the SU board um, July or June 2023. Um, so students are more engaged when they're when they can use their own voice. So I think that that one's pretty clear. Um, directive, uh, objective three, um, WSESU will engage, will institute flexible pathways for middle school through graduation as evidenced by board action on the proposals of these pathways. Um, so the portrait definitely said that uh, kids should have flexible pathways, which is also the way the state is going. And so this is just kind of merging those two directions um, and keeping that going and hopefully engaging our students more. Um, and I don't see any comments, so we'll keep going. Uh, objective four is WSESU will decide how to implement the concept of student advisory boards at the school, the SU level, and SU level so that representation of uh, respective student population can inform how their education looks and feels as evidenced by implementation um, report in June 2024. Um, so again, um, giving students more power will help them be more engaged um, and hopefully create a better education for themselves. Um, there are some good models for that out there too. Okay. Continuing to fly through this 10 page document, we are now on goal four um, information and communication. WSESU will improve the quality and effectiveness of its two way communication so that the stakeholder trust, understanding, and support will continue to advance the education of and opportunities for its students. Um, this objective came up um, because there was a recognized lack of communication between the school um, and the outward community. Um, and then there was also some communication issues internally. Um, so uh, draft objective number one is WSESU will identify an information and communications leader for the SU to guide the work in this area. So this is just to make sure that all communications that come out um, reflect the values of the schools and the supervisory union. Um, and I, I think the expectation will be that, that this person also teaches the teachers how to communicate more effectively. Um, so there's a lot of expectations there. Uh, objective two, WSESU will identify a data leader to guide and support the informational needs of the SU. Um, and so we still need to collect data so that we can continue to move forward. Um, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I think one of the challenges in trying to um, free up our students' education, drilling down at data feels to me like you could also um, narrow it. So I think that there's some challenges. And I think this is a really important position, but I also think that there's some challenges in not um, putting too much weight on the data. That's my personal opinion though. And my family's home. Um, okay, uh, objective, uh, where are we, three. Um, WSESU will develop a plan for informing and reporting the process of the strategic, progress of the strategic plan as evidenced by a presentation to the board. I think regular updates of the strategic plan are gonna be critical. Um, Okay, so objective four, WSESU will develop a systematic collection of student interests as part of its regular collection of student data to inform educational programming and personalization of the students' learning experiences. Um, I think it would be awesome if we could teach what the students are engaged in. Um, any comments? Okay, we're gonna keep going. Last one, uh, objective five. WSESU will conduct a review of all major sources and pieces of SU and building level communication to validate that it conveys the priorities and tone of its values today. Um, so for those of you who weren't part of the portrait, um, 
I just feel like this is really important to bring up. Um, they reviewed the uh, Battelle for Kids reviewed our student handbooks um, and found that our student handbooks were incredibly, incredibly negative. Um, everything was written in a punitive language um, and that it wasn't welcoming. Um, and so that's kind of the idea. I mean, that's one example of where this um, objective is really important and that if we can we can make people feel welcome and excited to be part of the community and not feel like they're already being watched um, that we might just have a more supportive community so um, that would be the strategic plan <laughs> in 25 minutes <laughs> pretty good what was that and it's pretty good. There's a lot in there. I love it. The the language is so very um easy on my ears. I mean, I mean, it's so I I, it, I like it uh, compared to other you know, strategic plan readings that I've been in on. Let's put it that way. Uh, I really like the goal number four. Uh, it seems to go hand in hand with the recent on electronic communication policy at the SU level. So that just uh, makes sense to me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I think the committee did an excellent job too, and, and, and Angie's can take some credit. But in that notes, notes column, not that you have to get into the words, but there's a a ton of resources in there and links that are going to help us guide this work. We talked about um, creating a simplified version of this for the for the general public because it is a very complex document and it really is meant for uh, lots of educators speak in there um, and it really is meant to be an inter more of an internal document and in that we can create one of our first things we might want to do is create the strategic plan at a glance type a document that is more user friendly for our um for our communities i think this um just the strategic planning process and outcomes highlights seems to be a start on that that second page mm. is a good outline of the goals and parts of it mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think that that's a good start. And I think that was put together by Battelle, right, Angie? Yeah. Um, In consultation with Angie, you were part of that too, weren't you? I know. Yes, uh, I think Mike did an overview of it. Yeah. Just a good outline. We'll, we, we'll work on Place to start with. It's going to give us a good, it'll give us a good framework for the next, you know, I'd say at least five years, if not seven years of work. That's why those dates are all need to be adjusted a little bit because some of them are pretty aggressive, some of them not aggressive enough. But and I think you, I think the thing to remember here, and it's in the middle of this pandemic, it's hard to remember this, but this started with about sixty people sitting in a gymnasium, and and that, and I'd say we averaged between forty-five and sixty community members that really did a lot of brainstorming and all those notes, Mike had captured all those notes. So not only did that go into the portrait piece, but it also, a lot of that was captured in this document piece because probably about 30 to 35 people stuck with us through that strategic piece. So, I mean, it really is, you know, uh, uh, I, I guess you'd say it's a collective document of, of a, a variety of mm -hmm. stakeholders and everybody won't agree with everything in there and you know uh, teachers had representatives but they're going to see a lot of teachers will see this for the first time when we roll it out but um i don't think they'll be surprised because and i know patty's on the line but a lot of the stuff in there is stuff we've been we've been talking about and doing anyway so i i don't think it's going to be a surprise yeah i don't i would guess there's not you know there's some stuff in here that's probably not new I just love the, I love the body of work and having a plan. Yeah. Not that we don't have a plan already, but you know, freshening it up maybe or revisiting. Right. Not to minimize it in any way. So this huge body of work, but yeah. um, 
it, it's exciting to me to feel like this collective representation of our community came together and agreed on some ways to go. Yeah, I think it was and, great. And, you know, regardless of whether we meet deadlines or not, we've, I just think it's great to have something to work toward. Yeah. So while Nikki is, ah, uh, oh, Nikki's back. Okay. My we have a new participant. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I love Hi, it. <laughs> one of our stakeholders. Yes, <laughs> one of our stakeholders. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so so what's going to happen uh, next is that. Um, this is going to go to the SU board where it's going to have to be approved. Um, It'll be discussed on the 23rd, hopefully approved on the 30th, if, if we need to have two meetings. Yeah, yeah that's that's what it, it was. Um, and uh, as many, not all of you are on the SU board, um, but as many as could attend, um, because this really isn't a plan for the SU, it's a plan for everybody. Um, and so we really need to have everybody in on that meeting and part of the discussion and uh, make it so that we truly own it. Um, I personally, um, I know you guys were, while I was dealing with other things, um, you guys were talking about your impressions, but I, it, it's time, like we hired Battelle to help us revolutionize how we're doing education. And I think that this is an exciting document that really um, it turns it over to you the administrative team to really revolutionize um, what we're doing. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I hope that, um, I don't know, like in a few years, maybe our kids will just be like, this is amazing. Things have changed. And so I'm, I'm really excited and hopeful. So, okay. Uh, this is, uh, See you, Patty. Thanks, Patty. Um, so, we're gonna set the next agenda. I think I'm just gonna review the agenda real quick to make sure I covered everything. Okay, yeah. Um, quick okay, question. so there's, there's a special SU meeting tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, Is that something urgent or like? Because I'm not on the SU board, but should I like? It, the agenda no. looks pretty light. <laughs> no, it's light. It's very light. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's very quick. I I would say if we're if we're there 10 minutes, but what that does mean is the ones who are on the SU board, which would be Colleen, Scott, and Nikki, if you could try to show up, that 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 would help us get that done. Yeah. Okay. Um, Six o'clock, okay. you've all got the link. Yep. And we're not going to any sports, so that's not an issue. <laughs> oh, end of that. Um, so, we don't have okay. A Let's set this next agenda. Um, I'm going to go with the same. So we got the principal's report, um, superintendent, uh, COVID, which just went seamless. Um, budget. Budget. We don't need to do the strategic plan. Um, Anti-racism. And that would do it. Can we compare Thanksgiving menus? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. You want, <laughs> you want that as an agenda item? I like that. <laughs> um, okay, is there anything I'm else? with anybody. You, we're not, we're not, no one can eat together, so we might as well at least discuss it after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, are we going to meet on the, what are we, the third Monday? Yeah. So that would be the 21st. Does that work? That would be December 21st. Not going anywhere. Yeah. I know. Okay. Not going anywhere. It'll be here. So. It could be any day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we're good with it. That's fine. I'm just going to move that date right now so you'll get a new invite. Okay, great. When just when is the last day of school before Christmas? 
Those are remote days in the calendar at this point, the 21st, 22nd, okay. 23rd, and then the break starts on the 24th. Okay. Great. Um, oh, and this was one of those years where you really could travel because you had... Two weeks, almost. Or a long yeah. Uh, oh well. We had a lot, a lot of great plans for this was our fortieth. Darkness gave us an extra week off. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> not forever. Do not. <laughs> this is not forever. We will get back to normal. We will uh, all travel again. <laughs> yes. Vaccines are on the way. I know yeah. that was good news today. Okay, so we've got that. Um, I'm looking through the radar list. Uh, for those of you who don't have it, it's community engagement, social, emotional, um, engagement preparation in variety, special education, um, physical plant security, proficiency-based education, and processed. Um, I feel like considering COVID, we're doing a, a reasonable job. <laughs> um, so. Um, but I do feel like it's important for us to keep those things in mind. Um, okay, so I would take a motion to move to executive session. Excuse me, Nikki. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. So I just wanted to um, not jump away from, I think it's really important what, what Beth brought up early in the meeting, recognizing um, our role in what the, uh, white supremacy in this forum and um i don't know how to it seems like we need to continue to work on that i mean obviously we do it's on our it's on our, on our agenda i'm sorry um if, if, are we really okay with our with our meeting night being the same night that the select board meets No, I think that needs to change. I don't mean to. That's kind of a jump of thought process there. I got many things on my mind, but um, it seems like something. You know, we keep we keep having it at the same time of our meeting at the same time of day, the same day of the month. It's not so much what what the current conflict is. It's just that seems like there needs there's room for improvement there, and I'm not. I don't know exactly what that might look like, but I think um, <clears throat> I think we tried to um, I think we tried to address that um, by having our forums and stuff when we um, when we could. <laughs> um, I think those listening forums were really um, they were pretty well attended and. Um, I think they were somewhat successful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now we can't do that. I suppose we could do one remotely. Well, we did. We did over the summer, right? It kind of, it was mm -hmm. a, right? Prior to the school start. Yeah, that's a good reminder. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I don't know why I brought that up, but it's just something that uh, a couple things on my mind. Yeah, no, so I, I would encourage everyone to read the link that Christine just sent. That's right. Um, yeah. Because it is, it's really, and it's the same, I mean, this is, as a nonprofit, like, this is how we function. It's like a direct look in the mirror of, you know, what, how we function and then how maybe it's not a welcoming environment to, for everybody. And, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, one of the things is, you know, worship of the written word. We just spent 45 minutes, minutes. Worshiping the word of this document, you know, and how is that, you know, how is that, you know, welcoming to other cultures and other, like, how does that work? And so I think it's it's really, I would just encourage folks to to read what Christine just said and just think about it a little bit and and just give some thought into how how does our board function? How can we keep each other in check around yeah, yeah. These, these different topics, you know, and. Um, and how can we recruit more people to participate in, in, you know, just coming to a board meeting, but also, um, you know, running for office. That's, um, yeah, like that, that's just, I think it was just something as a board we can 
try to commit to. I agree. And thank you for Christine for sending that out. Um, okay. Uh, so should we have a motion to move to executive session? Oh. Yes. So move. Okay. Beth. Second. Second. Colleen. Okay. Um, so all those in favor of moving to an executive session to um, further discuss budgeting. Uh, there was one other thing, but I can't remember. Oh, negotiations to some, you know. Yeah, negotiations. Um, yeah. So budgeting and negotiations. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah, and Wendy, I'll let you know when, when we come out and who we'll moved yeah. to adjourn. You read okay. my mind. <laughs> Thank you very much, it. Wendy. Yeah, thanks for coming, Wendy. I did invite you to the next one. You're, you're becoming a regular fixture around here. So. Oh, I'm so, I'll be sure to look for it in my mail. <laughs> All right, thanks.